Hallelujah. Today is part four. Part four A. Go in the spirit and power of Elijah. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke, he's talking about John the Baptist will go on in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the heart of the parent to their children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Whatever has been spoken in the New Testament belongs to all of us. It is your responsibility to position yourself. It is your responsibility to take advantage of the word of God that is allowing you to go in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the heart of the parent to the children that is obedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Very, very important. Now, you will never go in the spirit and power of Elijah unless few things are in place. That is what we are learning here. We learn that we need to be circumcised. We learn few things. Today, the subtitle is the four altar of Abraham verse 42 altars of Balak. Now, we will break it into two. This is part one. Uh, part 4A. There will be part 4B. It is very, very relevant for you to understand that when Elijah, before he began to pray, there are a few things he did. And he still have to call the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. So we have to come back and check why Elijah could not just go and pray and say, in the name of God, fire, come down. But you have to go and start by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let us learn a few things there. Also, one of the things you need to understand and consider if you need to go in the spirit and power of Elijah, don't forget, on the side of Ahab, there was a powerful woman loaded with witchcraft. Her name is Jezebel. Jezebel had 850 prophets around him. They counsel him. They tell him what to do. They, they empower him with charms, with a lot of things. 850. 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. They were eating at the table of Jezebel. So... They were very confident with all the kind of wickedness they were establishing in the land. One person, Elijah, came and challenged the 850 prophets. He put them on challenge. If we fight physically, you will beat me. But let us call the name of God in heaven. You call your idol. Let's see what will happen. What was the challenge? First King chapter 18, verse 9. Elijah said to Ahab, bring all the Israelites to me on Mount Carmel. One person is saying, bring all the Israelites to me. Let go to Mount Carmel. Ah, you must be having something to give to others when you call them. Everybody ran away from trouble. But Elijah invited trouble. You don't see many of them in the Bible saying, come to me. There are not many of them. Jesus said, come to me, all you are weary and bad, and I will give you rest. I will give you what? Rest. So Jesus has something to give. Now, when Elijah said, come to me, let's go to Mount Carmel, he's telling them something that to them it will be common because they used to do those kind of things. But this time, the business is in the hand of Elijah. Verse 23 of 1 Kings chapter 18, he said, get two bulls for us. Let Baal prophet choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood and 
but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answered by fire is God. Then all the people say, what you say is good, very good. And this is not the first time for them to hear those kind of things. Little do they know, Elijah had a business in his hand. There are a few things Elijah knew. There are a few things Elijah knew that they did not know. Elijah had dealt with the altar in the sun, in the moon, in the star. Elijah have commanded all the heavenly body not to respond to anything that will come from the ground, from the land of the living. He's in charge. Remember, Elijah is from Kerit Ravin, where he heard from God. He's controlling everything from the place where he heard from God, in the place of desolation, place of loneliness. He has everything in his hand. So he came loaded against 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah. Yeah. My Bible say, now listen to this carefully. The man of God say, you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire is God. But you know what the prophet of Baal did? My Bible says from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 26 up to 29, the Bible says they call on the name of Baal from morning, midday, till noon. They dance around the altar, the head mat, from morning till evening. Nothing happened. Elijah began to mock them. So they cry out and cut themselves with knives and lances until the blood gush out on them. As, the, as it was their custom, nothing happened. They prophesied until the time of offering of the evening sacrifice. There was no voice. No one answered them. No one paid attention. From morning to evening. Now, you need to understand that in your Bible, this is the first time priest of Satan or prophet of Satan sacrificed their own blood. This is the first time. They hand over the blood to Satan for fire to come down. Nothing happened. Hallelujah. So every wise man needs to ask, what is the secret of Elijah? What makes him to play on the head of this 850 prophet of doom? Praise the Lord. When Elijah said, come to me, come near to me, so all the people came near him, Elijah began first to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken. Every life without altar is useless. If you don't put an altar in place, believe me, there is an altar that will work against you. Every born again is qualified to raise an altar. By the special grace of God, there are four kinds of altars Abraham put in place for his life and his children. From Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, there are nine altars that was put in place. But I will tell you the four altars Abraham put in place. It will be up to you to make sure you are on the altar, you are not on the altar. The kind of life you are leading, without an altar, you will not achieve much. Elijah repaired the broken altar. Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribe of the sons of Jacob. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. If you are five in your family, there can be an agent of Satan that has five stones that represent every one of you in your family. He doesn't worry about you. You can go anywhere. He would take that stone and say, call your name. He said, come back home. You will find yourself back home. <laughs> I know one of my sisters, one of my daughters in the Lord. She was working here 
in SA, very good position. She just woke up in the morning and heard a voice, resign. She went to say, I will do what I had from today. I resign. Why are you resigning? I resign. It's my life. I resign. The moment she resigned, she came in the church and said, Pastor, I resign. I tap her head. Boom. She came back to her son and said, hey, how did I get here? I said, do you know what you just said to me now? I said, she said, no. I said, you resigned from work. He said, no. <laughs> you are the one firing me. I said, no. Check on your wallet. You will see a letter of resignation. When she was doing all these things, she did not know about it. Whether you like it or not, there is an altar. You can go anywhere. It is your responsibility to deal with that altar. It can be in the village, it can be in your father's house. It can be in your community, in the hand of very strong men that rule the entire community. Raise your voice right where you are. Any evil altar. Any evil altar. That rule my life. Consciously or unconsciously. Consciously or unconsciously. Break! Break! In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Uh huh. They are broken. I said they are broken. Amen. How did Elijah raise this altar? Twelve stone, according to the numbers of the tribe of Jacob. With the stone, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Children of darkness understand they build an altar not in the name of the Lord, in the name of something else. Every born again, it is your responsibility to raise an altar in the name of the Lord. I'm very happy with maybe two of my daughters that have visited the house personally uh, because of some kind of emergency. They show me the altar and I was very happy in my heart. How many bedrooms do you have in your house? Even if you don't have many of them, you must have a special place where you are meeting with your God. I thought you would say amen. amen. To go in the spirit and power of Elijah, repair the broken altar. If you used to pray 30 minutes, now you are praying only 5 minutes. You are a backslider. Your altar is a broken one. If you used to pray three hours a day, now you are praying only 30 minutes, you are a backslider. You have a broken altar in place. If you are working in your office, you just go and begin to work, you are already finished. You are zero. There is nothing you can do. There is an altar there in your office that is ruling your life. No wonder, don't you ask questions. You go early in the morning in your office, suddenly you begin to sleep. You don't know what is putting you to sleep. There is an altar. That altar has programmed your life. When you enter here, let him become very angry. You begin to fight with each other. You begin to fight anyhow. You don't know that your life is in the altar. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit that altar to break now in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you there? My Bible says in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 36, at the time of sacrifice, prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I'm your servant and that I've done all these things at your word. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. That is a point of contact for Elijah. He's a mighty man of God. Remember, when he came to Ahab, he said, As the Lord God of Israel live before whom I stand, there shall be no rain, no Jew, except at my word. But this time is not so. He's not so. He's the one who closed the heaven, and heaven backed him up. But this time, before him to say, Fire, come down. He started with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Hallelujah. 
What is so special with Abraham? What is so special with Abraham? Number one, one of the things you need to know, Abraham is coming from a family of idol worshippers. But he was not worshipping idols. Praise the Lord. Number two, I, I, Abraham is a traveler. He travels any hour, any time. And sometimes he doesn't know where he's going, but he's going. And God said to him, leave your father's house, leave your mother's house, leave your people, go. He just left. Abraham is a traveler. Who's Abraham? Abraham is a friend of God. Who's Abraham? Abraham is a prince. Whether you like it or not, Abraham is a prophet. Who is Abraham? Abraham is the father of our faith. Every born again life depends on the life of Abraham. I thought you would say amen. amen. Now, what you need to know is this one. During Abraham's lifetime, he raised four most important altars. Number one, an altar of praise, write it down. An altar of praise. Number two, an altar of prayer, write it down. An altar of prayer. Number three, an altar of peace. Write it down, an altar of peace. Number four, an altar of provision. Altar of provision. Now, let us go back to the altar of praise. You know, when you come in the church, mostly this church, we praise, we praise, we worship, we praise, we worship. What are we talking about? We are inviting God in our altar. Remember the prophet of doom, 850 before the call down fire. What do they do? They were dancing around the altar up to the place of cutting their own blood, cutting their body and blood gush out. That's the way they worship their God. No wonder, you see, the way people are doing wicked things. I know there are people, when they get angry, he will cut himself. When he sees blood, you are finished. What does that mean? A evil altar in place. But every child of God, when you encounter those kind of people, you don't know what to do. I will advise you, run for your life. If somebody wants to fight you, he cut himself, he sees blood or he licks his blood, run if you don't know what to do. But you must be a, a lack bolt uh, in Jamaica. The one that does his hand like this. So you run very fast. But every child of God that understands the meaning of altar, when you see that, you will confront the spirit. You point your finger on the fellow and say, get out, and demon will leave the person. I thought you would say, amen. Yeah. Uh, you are just hearing me telling you, but that is exactly what happened. The altar of praise connects us to the altar of prayer. The altar of praise connects us to the altar of prayer. But now, let us see. The, why we have to raise an altar of praise? Why, why must I raise an altar of praise? Why? Why? I will always raise an altar of praise when I have an encounter with the living God. I know God is here. I don't want to, to, to pray about, uh, to find out, are you sure God is here? No, God is here. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your descendant, to your children, I will give this land. You know what Abraham did? He built an altar to the Lord. Where God said to him, I will give this land to your children. What Abraham did? He built an altar there. What does that mean? God is not a liar. His word will come to pass. He, he spoke to me in this location. So this is the place where God spoke to me. I will never forget about this place. I raise an altar. An altar is a meeting place. An altar is a meeting place between spirit and mankind. It can be evil spirit, can be good spirit. You are in the house of God today, but some people are in the graveyard. 
You are in the altar of God. Some people are in the altar of the dead. You came to pray. Some people also went in the graveyard to pray. What kind of prayer is that? In the wrong altar. I want to pray for somebody here. In your backyard in the village, there is a graveyard there. Every Sunday, there are people who go there in that graveyard greeting the dead. And those things are affecting the entire family. From today, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It shall not affect you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I know one of my sons. The Spirit of God came to me and told him, beyond your house, there is a graveyard of your people. And it's killing people every year. He said, Pastor, you must be joking. I said, go home. He went up to their village. Today, I'm telling you, that boy is not around. He's dead. When he went there, he joined them to cry in that graveyard. I said, no. Why? He said, Pastor, I need some money. And they said to me that I must speak to the dead and I will get some money. Today, the boy is not with us anymore. Listen to me carefully. If you are born again, remain born again. Amen. And uh, take that responsibility and be very bold to, tell, to say to them, no, I'm not doing these things. Uh, verse 8 of Genesis chapter 12. Abraham moved. From there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord. Remember, let us say, by that time you could not build a house, you have to move. Abraham is moving around with his tent. His tent is what? His temple. His tent is what? His house. Anyway, he pitched his tent, Abraham built an altar to the Lord. But this altar is very spiritual. The altar is between Bethel and Ai. What is in Bethel? Bethel is the house of God. What is in Ai? Ai is the world. Abraham built his house in the middle. That means I will pray for the house of God. I will also pray for the world. The altar we put in place must not be affecting only the house of God. It must also affect the world. People that is in the world. For God so love the world. He gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish. So our duty is to take the world in the house of God. Not us in the house of God to go in the world. Hallelujah. So Abraham was very smart. My house will be in the middle. Remember Abraham is a businessman. Abraham is not a pastor in the church. There is no place you will find Abraham in his congregation. No. Yet he had 318 soldiers. At least you can know about that one. He was a powerful businessman. Abraham. But he's praying for the world and he's praying for the house of God. The altar we raise, this altar of praise. When we are praising God, our main goal is to win souls. If you are not winning soul, then we are not going anywhere. We are not helping ourselves. Don't go to another person's church and steal uh, people and bring them here. You are not doing anything at all. There are many unsaved people there that we need to lay to the Lord. No wonder we do EE3. There is a lot of courses happening here. Join us. Complete those courses. It will help you a lot. You will know how to win soul. No matter the size of the argument, you will come out very well. Let me say amen. amen. Let us leave the altar of praise. It's connecting us to the altar of prayer. 
This altar that Abraham built between Bethel and Ai, from there, the Bible says, he built an altar to the Lord and called on the, on the Lord. He called on the Lord. So the altar of prayer is the altar where we call on the Lord. It is for us to call on the name of the Lord, the altar of prayer. Every single person must learn to service the altar of prayer. How many time do you spend in your altar of prayer? What are the strategic time you have for the altar of prayer? Um, let me tell you strategic times of prayer. Six o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock. These are strategic times. Every spiritual man, they know that this is the time for me to pray. Hallelujah. If you don't know those things, it can be a problem. You may, no wonder David could pray seven hours, so he knew the business. He knew the business. He knew the business very well. Everywhere David went, he won all the battle. Everywhere he went to fight, you don't see David being defeated. From the time he started fighting, no defeat. Why? Because if he pray, after prayer, when he's going to fight, you are not fighting David. David is back up with the angel of God. They give him supernatural strength. He finishes you quickly. So David had that secret. Hallelujah. Altar of prayer. What do you need to know about the altar of prayer? Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I want to know great things concerning my life, concerning my family, concerning my business. It will always take place on the altar of prayer. Call to me. There must be an altar where you are calling upon the Lord. When you get into that altar, you say, oh God, today is Monday. Show me great and mighty things that will happen today, Monday, in my house, in my office, in my business. Amen. Amen. Now, you think about this. You do it every day of your life in a specific time. Are you sure God will keep quiet? If God is quiet today, tomorrow you will speak. And if he speak, it will be to your advantage. Hallelujah. It will not be to my advantage, to your advantage, you and your family. We have a lot of deceivers around, deceiving people. Anytime, anyhow, they don't care and they don't fear anybody. But when you are connected to the altar of prayer, God will show you even the face of the person that is coming to lie to you. When he finished doing his lies, you say to him, get out of my face. That must be the last time. Anyway, they will not even locate you. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone that is born. Of again, born again I lack the wind. You cannot look at them. You cannot see them. But yet, they exist. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, say amen loud and clear. Yeah. If you are there, say amen loud and clear. Yeah. Number three, altar of Abraham. It is an altar of peace. The altar of what? <laughs> Why do we need an altar of peace? That is exactly what is lacking to almost every nation. The trouble we are experiencing today from one nation to the another is lack of peace in that nation. If there is peace everywhere, you will not see anybody disturbing anybody, but yet something is missing. One of the things you need to understand is that the altar of peace take away peace from the wicked. Tell your neighbor, the altar of peace take away peace from the wicked. 
Hallelujah. Read with me from the book of Genesis, chapter 13, verse 2. I just want to break it down so you will understand very well. Read with me. Go ahead. Abraham was rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. This is the story. Abraham is rich, very rich. Yet, Abraham, Abraham have Lot with him. Lot is moving with Abraham anywhere he's going. God never called Lot. So, because the anointing is transferable, Lot became also rich. But he did not know the secret of riches of Abraham. Suddenly, the workers of Lot and the workers of Abraham began to fight. And Lot began to fight Abraham also. Abraham said to him, no, it is not good for us to fight. You are my close relative. Let us not fight each other. If, let us separate. If you go in the north, I will go in the south. If you go in the east, I will go to the west. Anyway, the land is in front of us. Choose anywhere you want to go. Go. I will not come there. I will go on the other side. That is a sign of a peacemaker. Only peacemaker can say those kind of things. Only generous people can say those kind of things. Take whatever you want, wherever you want to go. Take it, go. The land is so vast in front of us. If you go in the north, I will go in the south. I will make sure there is no clash. We don't fight each other. My workers are not fighting your workers, so there will be complete and genuine peace. Lord, look around and so Sodom and Gomorrah. The land was fertile. It was like, the Bible says, it is like, Sodom was like the Garden of Eden. Everything was there. And that is the portion Lot took. But God is not there. God said to Abraham, well, Lot is gone. Well done. Now, look to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, what you see. I give to you and your children, children. Your children will be like the sand of the seashore. If you can count the sand of the seashore, go ahead, count them. That will be the number of your children, Abraham. What did Abraham did? You just read it now. Abraham raised an altar unto the Lord. Where Lot went, he did not know the business of altars. And the people of Sodom were very wicked. You know the story? Up to the time where Lot began to say, well, uh, these two angels came. The angel anyway went to rescue Lot because of the prayer of Abraham. Because Abraham is a man of altar. He knew how to consult God. God could tell him great and mighty things that nobody knows. Only Abraham knew Sodom and Gomorrah will be destroyed where Lot went. Or he lost all his business that he was fighting against Abraham in one day because of lack of altar in place. Don't worry when you see somebody prospering. The secret of that prosperity is on the altar. Every born again businessman, your altar must be full of the blood of Jesus. Every altar needs blood, whether you like it or not. I put the blood of Jesus in your bank account. Yeah. I fill your house with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You must know what is in your house. My friend, how much money do you have in your bank account? I have the blood of Jesus. Why do you want to know how much I have in my bank account? I have the blood of Jesus in my bank account. Right here, in this church, Demon stole the money of one of my sons in his bank account. When the demon manifested to his wife, 
He said, the money that was lost in the bank, I'm the one who took it. Demons. You put your money in the bank account, you don't know where the money is gone. Sometimes it's human being. They use technology, mathematics. And sometimes it's evil spirit. Are you there? Your voice right where you are, shout it louder and clear. I repair, I repair my, broken my broken altar in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Of Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> I'm very happy when you repair your broken altar because many of you think things, think things happen by accident, you just become rich overnight, just like that. No, you need an altar in place. Look at Lot. He lost everything. <laughs> he one night. God ran down Benin Safa. Sodom and Gomorrah. Destroyed. He lost his business. He was putting a lot of big mouth against Abraham and his workers. Now he lost everything as a result of lack of altar. There were no altar. An altar is very relevant in your life. I do this preaching again and again. I know why. I know. Whatever you are doing, anywhere you go, come check back your altar. Where am I? Where am I fitting? Where must I go? <laughs> if you are in the spirit when prayer is going on here, you are a sinner. You will be afraid to join the prayer. That's why you must kneel down and say, Oh God, forgive me. Clean me. Wash me with your blood. Now you come and pray. You cannot just come and join. No, you know that mm, there is something is there. If indeed you are a spiritual person. So, we are talking about the altar of peace. It was the knowledge God put in the heart of Abraham to make peace with his brother. Hallelujah. He refused to fight his brother. He said, we are brothers. We don't need to fight. Take a portion of land. But he didn't know the secret of success. My friend, Jesus wants us to be at peace with each other. According to Mark chapter 9, verse 15. Be at peace with each other. With who? Each other. I don't know who is that each other. My Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, finally, this is Paul. He's closing his letter by saying, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Tell your neighbor, I don't want any agent of discouragement around my life. How do you know that this guy can encourage me? How do you know that this guy is discouraging me? Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Think about this. The God of love and peace will be with you. When? When you live in peace with others. Hallelujah. Our God indeed is a God of love. God also is a consuming fire. How can you bring fire and love together? Our God is a God of peace. But our God also is a destroyer. For he who sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested so that he may destroy the works of the devil. Are you there? So you must know the God you are serving. It is our responsibility to make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Tell every sister that is next to you there, my sister, live in peace with your mother-in-law. Yeah. 
Are you afraid to tell them? I'm not the one who says it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12. Put it on the screen. Verse 14. Go ahead, read with me. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy without holiness. No one will see the Lord. Now, put New King James, because they, they will say, man, that man is everybody anyway. Okay, put this one. Go ahead, read with me. Praise the Lord. It is our responsibility to make every effort to live in peace with everyone. And to be holy, with that holiness, no one will see the Lord. You must do everything in your power to live in peace so that the God of peace can be with you. Remember I told you, when the God of peace is with you, God will take away peace from the wicked. Okay. When the altars of peace is in place, when there is an altar of peace, there will be no peace for the wicked. According to Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, said the Lord, for the wicked. When there is an altar of peace, the God of peace will soon cry Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. When there is an altar of peace, the God of peace, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. When there is an altar of peace raised by the man who pleases God, God will make his enemy to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't know who's plotting evil against you. Today, when you finish here, they will praise your God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Judges, chapter 6, verse 24. Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and call it the Lord is peace. The Lord is what? Peace. There must be an altar of peace in place. Next time we will see the life, the, the life of Gideon, how he started. He struggled with his life with that the, because there was no altar. But the moment he put an altar in place, things changed. He became number one. From zero, he became somebody. The altar you are raising will change everything in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart now. Come and say it loud and clear. Look the other one on your left side. What about the one on your back side? Let it be so in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Number, number four altar, altar of provision. Altar of what? Provision. An altar of provision is an altar of test for you to give a testimony. An altar of provision is the only platform that proves you have mastered the spirit of greediness. The altar of provision. Genesis chapter 22, verse 7. Isaac spoke and said to his father Abraham, The father in the wood are here, but where, the, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide. God himself will provide. God himself will do what? 
will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. But let me tell you the truth. In the heart of Abraham, he was bleeding. This is my only son. And God wants him. How do God want Isaac? As a sacrifice on the altar. It's not easy to give your only son. Ask those that have only, only daughter, only son, only one child. When the child has a headache, the entire world will know about it. My child has a headache. My child, pastor, pray for my child. Pastor, this is the only one that I have. <laughs> Holy child. That is the only one that Abraham had. And you know what? God is not after Isaac. God is after the heart of Abraham. Are you sure this man loves me? He has Ishmael so far. Abraham said, oh, I have no choice. But deep down in the heart of Abraham, he was crying. I will burn my child on fire until he becomes dust. Mm, I have to do it. I have no choice. The obedience of Abraham was displayed when he took a sacrificial knife and raised his hand to kill his only son. And the voice came from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, stop it. Don't do anything to the boy. Now I know that you fear me. What happened to Abraham? His heart came down. <sighs> <laughs> She's very happy. She's in the spirit, by the way. Some of you are in the flesh. That's why you don't understand. She can see by fire, by thunder. Hallelujah. Even you, if you hear, you have, think about it. Think about it. This is the only son you have, and God say, hand him over. How will you hand him over? Bind him. Put it on fire. When Elijah was praying, God of Abraham, Isaac, let us stop there. Not yet Israel. Let us stop there. Who is the God of Abraham? He's the God who provides. He knew God will provide fire from heaven. Amen. I don't know where the fire is coming from. Where the ram came from for Abraham to sacrifice. When Abraham came with Isaac, God also on the other side was coming with the ram for sacrifice. Abraham did not see it. May the Lord open your eyes. Amen. And show you the gift, the talent, the skills that will take you from nobody to somebody in Jesus' name. Yeah. They are there. You don't see them now. Abraham did not see the ram. He could change his mind quickly if he saw the ram before to sacrifice his son. Say, oh God, you know what? I don't need to sacrifice my only son. I have a ram here. I have a ram here. No, the ram only appears after the action. Only after the action. And God said, hey, hey, stop. And you know God can stop your hand in a slow movement. You think you are fast and the hand of God can stop you right there. I want to pray for somebody here. Anyone that will raise gun to shoot you, it will not work against you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, there was a realm for sacrifice. God still needs you to sacrifice. There is something that you must sacrifice. The sacrifice, the burnt offering must take place. The realm was given to Abraham. When I just think when he was unbinding 
and losing Isaac. Why Elijah prayed, God of Abraham, Isaac. Isaac is an obedient child. Isaac is not a complainer. And when Elijah was calling the God of Isaac, God remembered that day. And he said, check Roman chapter 8, verse 32. Roman chapter 8, verse 32. God did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How many things? All things. If you connect what happened between Isaac, Abraham, and God, Elijah, and this word of God, well... I really don't blame any witch or wizard or demon that torments your life. It's lack of understanding of the word of God. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. Ask. He did not spare his own son but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How many things? All things. So when Elijah was praying, he was so confident that whether the devil like it or not, the 850 prophets of doom are defeated. My God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel is sending down fire. And you know what he say? I'm doing this because of your word, so that the heart of your people may come back to you. Fire came down. Boom. That fire will fall again. Yeah. I don't know to who I'm talking to. I say, that fire will fall again. Yeah. I'm talking about the fire of provision. Anything that is lacking in your house, in your business, may the Lord provide them for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you need to understand this. Understand this. Today is the beginning of the first day of the last week of the month. So the week we will enter, some of us are expecting salary to come. Some of us are expecting the boss to pay us. Some of us are expecting you must pay your workers. Yeah, there are some bills that you need to pay. You must pay your rent. And your ass will begin to go boop, 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 boop. This week, this week. Hey, I must pay this. The bond. Hey, I must pay this. Where the money is coming from? I want to tell somebody here. This week, you will not struggle. Yeah. You will not struggle financially. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You will get your salary on time. Amen. You will get your salary on time. Amen. The Lord will bless the works of your hands. Amen. You will not finish this week empty-handed. You will not finish this year empty-handed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not also freely give us all things. How many things? All. Whatever you desire. I hear many men of God saying, I don't pray for money. I have money. When they did not have it, were you there? They pray. They ask God. That is just arrogance and emotions. Arrogance and what? And emotions. How will you build up the faith of little born again Christians when you begin to boast that way? I don't pray for money. I don't pray for... No, I pray for money. I know why I have to pray for money. Even what I have, no matter how much I get it, it is not enough. Because other people are struggling up until now to put food on the table. Even to drink water. With water, water, water. It's a problem. Because it's not there. May the Lord you with all the good blessing that is in the land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. An altar of provision is very, very relevant for every born again. It's an altar of sacrifice. You must learn to give your Isaac in that altar. You must learn to give into the kingdom of God. 
To every altar you don't go empty handed. You do not appear on the altar empty handed. You must go with something relevant. Exodus chapter 20 verse 24. Exodus 20 verse 24. Read with me loud and clear. Make an altar on earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offering and fellowship offering, your sheep and goat and your cattle, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. How do you go on the altar? How do you go on the altar? You are going on the altar to sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Burn offering. What kind of sacrifice? Fellowship offering. Your sheep and goats and your cattle. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. The blessing of God is on the altar that you have put in place. The blessing of God is on the altar. And you must not appear on the altar empty handed. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, if you are Abraham's child, you will do what Abraham did. No wonder Abraham became the founder of a nation, Israel. He was truly a patriarch, a traveler, a prince, a friend of God, a prophet, the father of the faithful, the source of blessing to a lost world, Abraham. No wonder Elijah, everyone that will go in the spirit and power of Elijah must not forget what Abraham did. And they must not forget that before fire to come down, Elijah pray in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. God bless you. Amen. Now, you are here. You say, Dr. Shiko, pray for me. I heard you. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Well, that's a very good decision that you have taken. And uh, indeed, I will pray for you now. You want Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be your Lord and your Savior? Please raise your hand anywhere you are. Raise your hand. Jesus is here. He will see your hand. I will see your hand. I will pray for you and connect you to the Lord. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Raise your hand. Raise your, raise your hand above your head so that our workers can see your hand. Then I will pray for you now. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Please lay a hand on the, my daughter over there. Raise your hand. Raise it above. She's behind the pillar, if you can see. Beautiful. Raise your hand. Wonderful. You've done well to raise your hand, my son. Thank you, Lord. Sister, lay hand on sister. There is another sister there raising up his hand. Please make sure we do this quickly. Now, you that have raised your hand and every one of us here. Okay, please bow your heads. Don't look around. There is somebody here. You must give your life today and now. You must give your life today and now. Because I'm seeing an attack against you. And you know that there are people against you. You must give your life. The way you are conducting your life is not a sign that you are born again. Raise your hand right where you are. Quickly. Quickly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Beautiful. Now, say this with me, everybody. Please lay a hand on the fellow over there. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. You've done well to give your life to Jesus. After a few minutes, you will go in Mount Camel with that fellow. They will minister to you. Then we will take it from there. Praise God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen.